Okay. So let's take a look at what's been going on in Creech Field. Today is supposed to represent April 21st, 1824. Uh, on April 20th, the Red Detachment here with supplies arrived at Hohenau. And their objective is to meet up with the main army at Mokra. They have six trains uh, of supply that they need to get there to resupply their army. The blue detachment here, led by von Winkel, has been tipped off that there is an enemy in Hohenau through the use of their spy network. Remember, this is blue territory. So, their job is to find and destroy the Red Army. So, uh, the Red Army, or the Red Detachment down here, does not know where Blue is. They have no idea where Blue is coming from. So, they begin their march, and they get to Kroppen, and the decision is made that um, Denhauer will continue straight to Tiefenzell on his way up to Mokra, but he will send the forces of Pirsch to the north. Now Pirsch, uh, based on the limited instructions, will likely go through uh, Dieckenswald, Sildau, uh, Strongkirch, Got Athloth, Book, Stoenal, and Mokra. So his orders were to go north and then cut over. Um, however, Winkel has headed down to Sildau and he has ordered Schmidt to head to Wallig. So at 10 a.m., this is roughly what the map looks like. Um, the forces of Schmidt are run by Robert James. The forces of Winkel, the main forces, are run by uh, Robert Keith. And then we have Pirsch, who is run by Mom and Pops. And then Dan Hauer, who is run by Mason. Okay. So moving over to the main battle map, what we see is that three of the wagon trains are traveling with the main army of Dan Hauer, and they are almost here to Tiefenzell. Now, currently, their viewpoint, uh, I will show the report, but essentially, they don't see any enemy right now. They are terrain masked. Um, they do see some of these units here uh, that are ascending the mountain. Okay, uh, now, the Pirsch uh, headquarters here on the hill they have halted their, uh, their column and have sent a few people up onto the hill to do reconnaissance this morning. And what they have seen is they have seen this cavalry troop heading towards Tiefenzell. And they're also able through these mountains to see some of these um, cavalry units uh, in the town of Sildau. So that is kind of what it looks like. From the Blues perspective, uh, they haven't spotted because as they've been riding, these guys have been terrain masked the entire time. So they haven't spotted anyone um, here. They also haven't spotted any of these troops here because of terrain masking. So um, they will likely meet shortly, but uh, for now there has been no contact. Um, the blue units here, they just arrived in Sildau and they currently um, don't see anything either. So from their perspectives, you'll see on the, the individual reports, um, there's, there's not much going on from Blue's perspective. Over here you have uh, the Schmidt headquarters and they're over here somewhere uh, off the map. Okay, so now we're gonna switch over to take a look at the reports for Blue One. We have Major General Von Winkel has just arrived in Sildau, and this is what the view looks like from his perspective, right? He can see that there are these roads going off. He knows that he has sent um, <clears throat> troops, uh, 
troops to do reconnaissance uh, in Tiefenzell. He's also sent troops to do um, some reconnaissance in Gutwaldu and also towards Altschloss. So um, those troops are out. No messages have been received yet with any uh, intelligence. Okay, he dispatched Schmidt towards Walig from Tiefenthal and um, he expects that he should be uh, to Walig by now. And then he is asked to consider the situation and then provide uh, any updates to orders or messages uh, at the end of this round. 1000 hours, 21st of April. So from Bluetooth's perspective, it's much worse. He can't see much of anything. Colonel Von Schmidt has arrived in uh, Wallig. Um, you know, this is, these are the troops that he has. Um, and he's been met with a warm welcome, although the inhabitants are nervous. He's made inquiries and nobody has seen any sign of any invading forces in or around Wallach. So um, this is a, a zoomed out picture of the map, right? This is not to scale, but these are the forces that are in and around Wallach and they don't see anything. So Blue is asked to consider the situation and decide what to do uh, from there. Okay, Red 1's report. Um, this is what Red 1 sees. Again, they can see these units ascending the hill. They really can't see, um, you know, the few people that are up on the hill. They're uh, they're being sneaky. Um, they don't see uh, the rider up here in the north because of terrain masking. And um, so, yeah, they marched with the main forces um, to Kroppen. They parted ways. They sent them north to the top of the map uh, towards Schonkirch. And from there, they'll head to Gutwaldu and up to Mokra. Um, and um, so, yeah, you can see Tiefenzell straight ahead, and uh, they're going to probably just continue on marching. Um, but they were asked to consider the situation, not that they know anything all that much. They know that their troops are heading north, and they're heading towards Tiefenzell, so everything looks good from their perspective. And finally, uh, report um, going to Red 2. They, they probably had the most... Uh, advantageous or interesting round in that uh, they moved up to this hill and they sent out a small little reconnaissance squad and they were able to spot some of the enemy. They don't realize that it's such a large force up here but they do see the leading element and this reconnaissance unit heading towards Tiefenthal. So they are asked to consider the situation and uh, decide what they are going to do. Now if it were me, I would immediately dispatch a messenger probably along this route to uh, make all haste and uh, let the commander here, uh, Dan Howard, know uh, the situation that uh, there are forces up here uh, because time is, is of the essence. If you are uh, going to have any sort of a confrontation, you probably want to, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> get your forces arrayed into some ground that is advantageous and. Uh, you know, deny your enemy to do the same. If you can maybe block them off before they come across the river, you can probably buy some time. Um, these wagon trains here, I would, uh, I would probably want to reroute. I probably would not want them to be heading towards danger. Um, I would probably want them to perhaps uh, either double back or turn down this road uh, immediately, and then. Um, you know, try to find another alternate route that is less uh, uh, less costly. So that is the situation. Those are the reports, and I look forward to seeing what happens next. All right, until next time.